to injury cannot be replaced and uh, are never replaced by the heart despite of any cardiac intervention that you do or any therapy that you do cardiac. And this leads to ultimately adverse cardiac modeling and heart disease and heart failure. So how do we, how do we fix this now? And that's where stem cells come in. So if you look at uh, do a general search in PubMed, and you will find that there are about 20,000 articles that are, are now looking at your base kind of stem cells and their capabilities. There's a 4,000 plus review article. And basically, they show that stem cells can be a new way to treat uh, cardiac diseases. Uh, they, um, since conventional therapies cannot really degenerate the heart, uh, stem cells have the ability to uh, form functional cardiac sites and repair the heart factor the body from injury. So briefly what happens is that, that you know that stem cells can be can be isolated from various tissue, they can be grown in the dishes, and then they have multi-dating potential depending on what source they are derived from. In terms of uh, the general strategy for, for cardiac repair, you can inject uh, any kind of stem cell, either intracarbonate or intramyocardial injections, and these stem cells can do a lot of different things in the heart. Uh, they can activate the endogenous uh, progenitor, they can differentiate the cardiomyocytes, they can become vascular muscle cells or endothelial cells, and can uh, prevent the apoptosis of the cardiomyocytes. They can remodel the scar and change the extracellular matrix and can also induce uh, antigenesis in the heart. So ultimately, all together, you have an attenuated W remodeling, improved cardiac function, enhanced perfusion, and an overall increased functional capacity in the heart once you transplant the stem cell. So over the years, a number of different stem cell types have been used uh, for cardiovascular diseases. Uh, you can see that they have been scattered with myelas, fractionated bone marrow on the nuclear cell, thymus stem cells, CD34 and 133 positive cells, and adipose and cardiac cardiac stem cells, and all have been used in, in, in patients and in clinical trials. And the big thing is, that stem cell administration improves cardiac output. So um, despite of the, the few cells that, that I have, have not really been as efficient as uh, you would have thought, but overall, um, you get an improvement in injection fraction and cardiac uh, function, as well as uh, all of these stem cells have uh, pretty much been, been shown to be safe uh, for uh, administration into the heart. As a consequence, people have developed a number of different uh, cell therapy based products. And we kind of started off with the uh, first generation products where we took some um, mesenchymal cells and regenerative cells, one of our nuclear cells, and used the uh, transcranial stem for in the heart for cardiac therapy. And then that led into the second generation of, uh, of cardiac products that included embryonic stem cells a combination of cell types. Uh, some people used uh, combined with the cells and create the right cells, uh, cells together and have shown that the combination is better uh, than the single cells alone. So um, in the same context, uh, people have used cardiopoietic cells, CDCs and cardiac stem cells and allogeneic cells. So basically you can take uh, cells from a, from a healthy donor and can transform them into uh, another person and the cells do not have an immune response and, and people have uh, shown that they uh, can be a sort of an off-the-shelf product. And now uh, the next generation of uh, regenerative medicine for the heart includes uh, the central cells, um, exosomes, uh, which uh, recently have been shown uh, to be uh, released by every kind of stem cell and carry a lot of regenerative benefits. Some of our work has also shown that you can actually use exosome in certain cells and they carry almost the same effect as the cell and can lead to regeneration in the heart. People have used Wharton's jelly and then IPS derived uh, cell types as well as some um, um, patches or, or 
are strong with engineering issues uh, or the treatment of uh, cardiac disease. So all in all, there's a bunch of different products that are being developed right now, and you have uh, a lot of companies involved all around the world that are commercially pursuing uh, the cell cell therapy products for cardiac diseases. And these are largely divided into NHPNA or autologous cell therapies. So and they have them are either in preclinical phase one, phase two, or phase three stages. Um, so we can appreciate here that there are lots of different companies that have actually taken their products to phase three testing. Uh, it's uh, sort of one step before you actually get uh, FDA approvals for implementation of the therapies into into patients. So so they're pretty advanced at the moment. And, um, and depending upon the cell type, uh, uh, then shown to be beneficial to what of uh, the heart. So the big question now is how do you really select the best stem cells for, for cardiac repair and heart diseases? And for that purpose, we kind of came out with this uh, analysis, which we kind of named as uh, SWOT analysis. And that was based upon strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats uh, for each type of stem cell that is, has been used for cardiac repair. And whether that cell type is good for, uh, for clinical trial or clinical application. So if you look at embryonic stem cells here, you can get high or um, they're fully formed, and you can get high quantities of the cells. The weaknesses are they have allogeneic uh, potential and uh, can also need to be um, some, some clinical complication development of arrhythmias in patients uh, that have actually been uh, given in your next stem cell. Um, the IPS cells are the same, it's pretty much the same way. You can get a lot of uh, high or high mu of the cells, but again, uh, you get the um, you cannot control differentiation and you cannot uh, control what they become, and that leads to downstream problems uh, in patients who get like the secretized uh, stem cell. On the other hand, in well stem cells, such as bone marrow derived uh, cells or mesenchymal cells, have uh, slightly better potential and they have uh, better differentiation potential, and you can control them a little bit more. Uh, but the weaknesses are that you uh, are limited by the number of, of cells that you can make in the end and, um, and you know, how fast they can grow and how fast they can be, uh, be prepared for clinical applications. At the same time, um, some of our work has also shown that in the heart, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, that the heart itself contains a stem cell population. So, uh, you can use the, these stem cells derived from the heart and can use them for the repair of um, or can, you know, can isolate them and extend them, then you can transplant them back into the heart uh, for them. So, whatever stem cell you have, this is basically uh, what's going to happen in the end that you know the, the patient or the patient population with uh, cardiovascular diseases are, are pretty much uh, people who are at an advanced age or are, are, um, above 50 or you know, 55 or 70 years of age. And, and that really is, is the issue that if you're going for an autologous uh, therapy and you're, you're isolating cells from that patient, uh, the main question is whether age progression adversely affects stem cell function. So very briefly, uh, some of the common signs of aging include uh, impaired uh, vision and hearing, strength and, and the muscles and, and bone density, uh, decreased immune system function and cognitive ability, and less efficient metabolism and loss of energy uh, in, in various organs and in hair loss and decreased balance and overall mobility. At the same time, you have uh, something called in the, in the heart that we call as the first cardiac remodeling, 
or aged uh, cardiomyopathy uh, that is a normal consequence of the advance of biological aging in the patient. So the cardiomyocytes uh, undergo a first cardiac remodeling that can also sort of make the heart more vulnerable to an 